So now you can set the head aside while we make the body. So the body is started the same way that you did for the head. You're going to start with a magic circle and your white colored yarn. And then you want to place your slip knot and then six single crochet into the magic circle. So again, this is just like what we did for the head. and then you close it the same way and then you're going to place two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a stitch count of 12 in the round so just like for the head you're going to increase in chronological order all the way to one single crochet into seven stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So I'm going to get you started. You're going to place your yarn marker and for the first increase round you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet in the first stitch two single crochet into the second stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and again remember to get your stitch count just add six to your previous round so the previous round we had 12 stitches if you add six to that that means that you should have finished with 18 stitches in the round then just move your yarn marker up to where you left off and the next increase round is one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so now you should remember how to make the increase rounds, but I'm going to show you one more. So you just move the yarn marker up, and then for this next increase round, you make one single crochet into three stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then the next round would be one single crochet into four and then two next round one into five and then two then one into six and two and then the last increase round would be one single crochet into seven stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch so now after you finished your last increase round which was one single crochet into seven stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch you should have a total of 54 stitches in the round then go ahead and move your yarn marker up and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for 30 rounds so 30 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So after you finish your 30 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, go ahead and take some craft stuffing and place it into the body. And then we're going to start closing the body. And you can add more craft stuffing as you close. So go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. And then you're going to make one single crochet into the next seven stitches. So one single crochet into a total of seven stitches. After you finish the one single crochet into seven stitches, then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. So just go right into the next stitch, bring up a loop go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through all three for a single crochet, two stitches together. And then you're going to repeat this pattern 
all the way around back to the yarn marker, one single crochet into seven stitches, and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you should have a total of 48 stitches in the round. And remember for the stitch count, you just subtract six from the previous round. And then for the next decrease round, you're gonna make one single crochet into six stitches, and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then one single crochet into five stitches, and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then just move your yarn marker up, and then you make one single crochet into four stitches, and then single crochet two stitches together. And you can see how you're getting smaller and smaller, just like you did with the head. So go ahead, continue on. Next round will be one single crochet to three stitches, and then single crochet two, stitch, uh, two stitches together, then two, and then single crochet two stitches together, then one, and then single crochet two stitches together, and then come back. So now you can see that you're almost close. I just finished the last decrease round, which was one single crochet and one stitch, and then single crochet two stitches together. So now you can go ahead and remove the yarn marker, and then you're just going to make single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed. And then we're going to slip stitch the rest of the opening closed completely. So single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed. Then you can go ahead and slip stitch it closed. So you skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you're just going to slip stitch until the opening is completely closed. And then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through. Then you can take your tapestry needle to bury the loose yarn end. So then just take your tapestry needle, put it right onto the loose yarn end. Then you can take and go right where you finished off and come out anywhere. And then that buries your loose yarn end nicely. Go ahead and trim the loose yarn end. So now you can take the head and place it onto the body. We're going to sew it in place. You just need your tapestry needle and the same colored yarn as the bottom of the head, portion of the head, and mine is white. Now before you start sewing, make sure that the nose stays, oh, mine turned upside down. Fix my nose. So make sure that your nose is lined up with the center of the, the front of the body. So I want to position it here. So this is the front and the nose will stay in line with the front of the body. See, I think I just turned that upside down. I'm trying to figure out the nose. Okay, and then just take, once you have the nose centered, then you can take and start in the back. Take your tapestry needle and just go right through the body and then up through the head. And then you want to leave a little bit of a loose yarn in for tying a knot. And then you're just going to go a stitch over on the head from where you came out and then go back down into the body. And then you just want to come out right where you went in. You can reposition the head after you're finished. Then, go ahead and tie a knot. And then you can reposition the head again. And then once the head is positioned, and don't worry about this first round, 
because you may be skipping stitches on the first round, you're going to make multiple rounds securing the head to the body. Then, since we exited the body, you're going to go stitch over in the body and go back up into the head. Then, because we exited the head, you're going to go about a stitch over on the head and then back down into the body. And then you want to make sure that the head stays straight or that the nose is centered with the front of the body as you sew. And then you just keep repeating that all the way around until the head is secure. After you sew the head on, just set it aside and then we're going to, I'm going to show you how to make the feet. So now we're going to make the feet. Go ahead and take your white colored yarn and then drape it across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then take your crochet hook, go right under those two loops, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle, just like we've done before. Then take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet. You have these two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Then take that loose yarn end and pull on that. Then just turn your work so that you're working in rounds. So now you have six stitches in the round. We're going to increase it to 12 stitches in the round. So you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total stitch count of 12. So two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a stitch count of 12 and then come back. So now you should have a total of 12 stitches in the round. You could turn it over and pull on that loose yarn end if you need to to completely close the center. So now you should have a total of 12 stitches in the round. Go ahead and take your yarn marker. I just use one of my scraps of yarn. Place it right where you left off and then we're going to make three increase stitches in chronological order. So the first increase round you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And You're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into one stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then for the next round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And then for the last increase round make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have 30 total stitches in the round. Go ahead and take your yarn marker, move it up to where you left off and now you're going to make eight single crochet two stitches together. So you go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a single crochet two stitches together. And you're going to make eight of those. So I finished one, two, I'm going to show you one more and then you can go ahead and finish on your own. And three. So go ahead, finish a total of eight single crochet two stitches together and then come back. So then after you finish eight single crochet two stitches together, then you're just going to make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches back to the yarn marker. So now you should have finished that round with 22 total stitches in the round. Go ahead and take your yarn marker, move it up to where you left off, and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for 15 
rounds. So 15 rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch around. So after you finish your 15 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, then you're ready to stuff the leg with craft stuffing. Then just place your yarn marker right where you left off and for the first decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet into three stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. If you have any remaining stitches, just place one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches. Then just take and move your yarn marker up for the next round. And then for the next round, just make one single crochet in every stitch around. So only one single crochet in every stitch around. So now I have still 18 stitches in the round. We're going to make another decrease round. So for this decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. And then single crochet two stitches together and then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then when you have the two remaining stitches just make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches and then go ahead and just single crochet two stitches together. And then you could remove your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and then you're going to make one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. So one round of one single crochet in each stitch. Then take and move the yarn marker up to where you left off and you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you can remove the yarn marker and now we're just going to slip stitch closed. And you don't have to worry about putting additional craft stuffing because we're going to be sewing the attaching the legs through this top portion. So I created a little narrow closure for the legs to attach to the body. So now to completely close it, you're going to skip the next stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. And you're going to continue to slip stitch closed. Just go all the way around and finish your slip stitches until it's completely closed. So I'm going to make one more. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So then just take your tapestry needle, put it onto your loose yarn end, and then just go in right where you tied your knot, come out anywhere, and then just trim the loose yarn end. Then you can kind of bring the top back out and then this is what it should look like, a little rounded. So you're going to need four of these. Go ahead and make three more the exact same way and then come back. So now after you have all of the legs, go ahead and take two of them and your tapestry needle or your long needle, upholstery needle, for attaching the legs and then you need the same colored yarn as the legs and this time you have a little bit of a out pouching area where you're going to enter with your needle and so you want to make sure that the out pouching in the paw is facing forward 
So you see this little area that's out pouching. That's going to be the front of the paw. And then just kind of pancake or squish the top area that you're going to go through. And then take your upholstery needle and then you're just going to go right through the tip and come out on the opposite side. And then just pull it through and you want to leave a little bit of a loose yarn end for tying a knot and burying into your work. Then you want to line up the foot with the side of the body. And usually I'll use the ears as a landmark and, and take an imaginary line from the ears to the middle portion of the body. And that's where I usually place the foot. So you can see where the yarn comes out of the leg and then the center of the body, which is midline with the ears. And then that's where I'll enter with the needle. And you want to go into the gaps between the stitches with your needle and you're going to come out on the opposite side at the same level. And then I usually leave about an inch or two between the leg and the body. And then you're ready to go through the other leg and make sure again that you position the paw so that it's facing forward. And then you kind of sandwich the top and then go right through the top with your needle. Come out the opposite side. And again, you want to leave about an inch or two between the legs and the body. And then you're just going to go a stitch over and then go right back through. So about a stitch over and come out a stitch over on the opposite side. And then you're going to go right through the body again, about a stitch over, and then come out on the other side of the body, about a stitch over. So you can see how I came out of the body about a stitch over, and then I'm going to go right through the leg again, and then come out a stitch over. And then you're going to repeat the whole process one more time. Then, after you've gone through twice, you can take and pull on the loose yarn ends to cinch the legs against the body. And if you meet any resistance, then don't keep pulling, let go, and then pull on one yarn strand at a time until you've cinched the legs against the body. Then once you're happy with the placement, then you can take and tie a knot. Then just take and trim the loose yarn ends, but leave enough to where you can bury it into your work. Put the loose yarn end onto your tapestry needle, and then I usually go right where I tied the knot, and then come out on the back of the leg anywhere. Then you can take and just trim the loose yarn end. The back legs are attached the same way. You want to make sure that the paws are facing forward. And then, of course, you'll need the loose yarn end for burying into your work. And then, you want to line up the leg on the back of the dog and make sure that the where you entered the back leg is in line with where you entered the front leg. And then make sure that it is lined up. It's not too high or too low. You want it to be exactly in line with the front legs when you enter the body. So you can see here is where I'm going to be entering. Then you just go through twice the exact same way that you did for the front legs and then you just cinch the back legs in place just like you did for the front legs. And then you have your front and back legs movable. 
So now you can set the dog aside while I show you how to make the tail. So for the tail, we're going to start with a magic circle. Just drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice, and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. And then you're going to bring up a loop for your slip knot, and this time you're going to place eight single crochet into the magic circle. There's seven and eight. And then you're going to close it the same way. Then turn your work so that you go into the first stitch and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until you have the length that you want for your tail. And when you come back I'll show you how many rounds I made. So for mine I made a total of 16 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch and then I made a slip stitch into the next stitch over, yarn over, and turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can finish off just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to sew the tail onto the back of the dog. Now I didn't place any craft stuffing in mine but I am going to put a pom-pom on the end of the tail this pom-pom maker is approximately three inches in diameter. You can also use a piece of cardboard. So if you're making a larger pom-pom, then you would make the square or rectangle about the size of your, your store-bought clover pom-pom maker. And then what you would do is you would just wrap. Now, if you were using the smaller one, then you could make a smaller square about three inches by three and a half inches. And then how you use this cardboard is you just wrap the yarn several times around the cardboard, and then you would remove the cardboard and then wrap the center and tie a knot with your yarn. And that's how you and then you would cut the loops of the yarn that you created and that's how you would make the pom-pom with the cardboard but in this video tutorial I'm going to be using my pom-pom makers so now go ahead and set your tail down and then you're going to get your pom-pom maker and you can just open it up and then I'm using my white colored yarn and I usually drape the yarn across the side of the pom-pom maker and then start wrapping the arch and then once the arch is wrapped, you just close it up and then you can cut the yarn and then repeat the same thing for the other side. And then I usually just use my embroidery scissors to cut right down the center. Then you can pull the yarn that was on the sides and then just trim a piece of yarn strand to tie down the center and to use to tie the or sew the pom-pom onto the tail. So it just goes right down the center and then you just tie a knot. Now if you don't know how to use the cardboard one, I show how to use the cardboard to make a pom-pom in my Crochet L baby hat video tutorial so you can see how I did it in that video tutorial. Then once you've tied the knot you can go ahead and remove it and then you have an instant pom-pom. Works great. 
So now you can go ahead and sew it onto the tip of the tail. Just use your tapestry needle. And then you just go right through the tip of the tail. Bring both strands down through the pom-pom. Then you can take and tie a knot. And then I usually bury my loose yarn ends back into the pom-pom. So you can add as many pom-poms as you want to the tail. So then you just go and then go right back up into the pom-pom. So if you only want one pom-pom on the end, you can do that, but you can also add more pom-poms along the side of the tail. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few more pom-poms around mine. But first I'm just going to show you, I just trim the pom-pom loose yarn in so that they blend in with the rest of the pom-pom. And you could trim the pom-pom if you want to. So for mine, I just sewed one more pom-pom on there just to make it a little bit more fluffier. Then your tail is ready to sew on. Just make sure that the pom-poms are facing up on top. So if it curls back onto the back of the dog, the pom-poms are on top. So then I just positioned my tail, center it on the back. And then once you're happy with the placement, then you can take your tapestry needle and just sew all along the base of the tail securing it to the back of the dog. So now you're finished with this version and you're ready to make the outfit and there's going to be a separate video tutorial for the outfit.